there is a generous view, and the generous view is that you are a young man who made a series of terrible, terrible, very, very bad decisions. The less generous view is that you have committed a massive fraud, that this is a Ponzi scheme, a manipulation of the system. And I want to start there because I think that there are so many people who have that question, which is, what is this? And what did happen? Yeah, look, thanks for having me. And, um, and at the end of the day, I, I was CEO of FTX. And that means whatever happened, why ever it happened, I had a duty. I had a duty to all of our stakeholders, to our customers, uh, our creditors. I had a duty to our employees, to our investors, and, and to the regulators of the world uh, to do right by them, to make sure the right things happened to the company. And uh, clearly, I didn't do a good job of that. Um, clearly, I... Um, I made a lot of mistakes or, or things I would give anything to be able to do over again. Um, I didn't ever uh, try to commit fraud on anyone. I, I was excited about the prospects of FTX a month ago. Um, I saw it as a thriving, growing business. I was shocked by what happened this month. And, you know, reconstructing it, uh, where are there things I wish I had done differently? Well, let's, let's talk about some of the things you, you, you would want to have done differently. Uh, but I don't want this to be an abstraction uh, for folks, because it's a lot of big numbers um, and often doesn't feel human. Um, one of the, the letters I got, uh, I want to read to you, Sam, um, because it's from a gentleman who said that he lost his life savings. Um, and the subject line is, Sam Bankman-Fried stole $2 million from me, says Andrew. Can you please ask SBF why he decided to steal my life savings and the $10 billion more from customers to give to his hedge fund, Alameda? Can you ask him why his hedge fund was leveraging long all of these S coins? I'm going to keep it polite for the kids. Please ask him if he thinks, the, thinks what happened was fraud. These are the kinds of letters that I've been getting repeatedly over the past several days. What do you tell this, this man? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm deeply sorry about what happened. Um, here's, you know, the long and short of what happened. And, and I'll start by saying, uh, just to, to make a distinction here, you look at the U.S. platform, you look at the international platform. The U.S. platform uh, is a U.S. regulated platform with American users. To my knowledge, that's fully solvent. That's fully funded. And uh, you know, I believe that withdrawals could be opened up today and everyone could be made whole from that, that none of these problems plagued the, the U.S. platform. Um, then you look at the international platform, uh, you know, for their non-U.S. users. And, uh, I mean, as the letter says, uh, Alameda Research did have a long position. And the international platform... It's a margin trading platform. It's a derivatives platform. It's a platform where all the clients were, you know, going on, placing something as collateral and using that to put on a position, whether that's a futures position, a spot position, a borrow. Um, and, you know, what the exchange was storing was the collateral from all of those positions. Uh, Alameda Research was, you know, one of those that put on positions there. And as I try and reconstruct this, um, you know, over the last month, I, I have limited access to data, but... Um, my, 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 my view of it, um, from what I have been able to see, is roughly that, um, you know, basically, look, a year ago, um, Alameda had, I think, something like 10% leverage, you know, had something like 10 times the assets of the position that it had on. Over the course of the last year, there were a number of market crashes um, that drove the value of those assets down and the leverage up. Um, I think it was, to my knowledge, still under... 2x leverage, you know, as of uh, a month ago, um, you look at the, what happened this month, and uh, you know, in a few days, all out. Um, I mean, PR assault, which led to a total market collapse in a pretty short period of time. No bid side liquidity. Um, uh, I think more than ten billion dollars wiped off in the matter of days. And uh, realistically speaking, no ability for FTX to be able to to liquidate that position and generate everything that was owed but from I it. But I think the bigger question is where Alameda got the loan from. Yep. 
which is to say that there is a view that this is about commingling of funds. Right. And, and, and in that letter uh, that I just read you, um, this gentleman actually copy and pasted the terms of service for FTX into the email. And I just want to read you this. It says, none of the digital assets in your account are the property of or shall or may be loaned to FTX trading. FTX trading does not represent or treat digital assets and users' accounts as belonging to FTX trading. So how is it possible that Alameda had this loan of such a large size? So there is that piece from the terms of service. Um, but there were a number of other parts of the terms of service, a number of other parts of the platform on top of that. There is the borrow lending facility where users were lending billions of dollars of assets to each other, um, you know, collateralized by assets on the exchange. Um, you had, uh, and you had obviously futures contracts where there are leveraged positions on. Now, of course, all of this, um, it, it's meant to be the case that these are positions where FTX could, uh, if it needed to, margin call those positions and close them down in time such that it would cover all of those, uh, you know, all those shorts, all those liabilities. Obviously, that wasn't the case here. And that's a massive failure of oversight of risk management um, and of uh, you know, diffusion of responsibility from, from myself running FTX. But, um, but let's but, just, but just make know. this very straight. Was there commingling of funds? That's what it appears like. It appears like there's a, been a, a genuine commingling of the funds that are of FTX customers that were not supposed to be commingled with your separate firm. I didn't knowingly commingle funds. And again, one piece of this, you have the margin trading. You have you know, customers borrowing from each other. Alameda is one of those. I was frankly surprised by how big Alameda's position was, which points to another failure of oversight on my part. Um, and uh, failure to appoint someone to be chiefly in charge of that. Uh, but uh, I wasn't trying to commingle funds. Let me ask you this. The Wall Street Journal reported that Carol and Ellison um, told Alameda staffers that Alameda used FTX client funds to cover loans that were being recalled because of the lunar triggered credit crunch. Carolyn says that she, Sam, Gary, were aware of this. How do you square that with what you originally said over Twitter, that this was an $8 billion accounting mistake? So uh, I'll point to two things. And first of all, obviously, I don't know what anyone else is thinking here. You know, I can only talk about it from what I know, from what I knew. Um, and a lot of this is reconstructing it over the last month. I have limited access to data. but, uh, But you know, what it seems like happened is in the middle of the year, um, uh, a lot of, you know, most of the borrow lending desks in the space blew out or closed down. And um, it seems like Alameda had, you know, margin positions opened with them and that it likely moved a bunch of that over to FTX uh, this year when they shut down. And that means, you know, I, I think it was over collateralized um, positions. Um, but positions that involve substantial size and substantial U.S. dollar size on the borrow side. Uh, in terms of the uh, accounting mistake, um, again, looking through what happened, um, I think that there is a substantial discrepancy between what the financials were, what the audited financials were, the true financials, um, what the exchange understood. All of that was was was, was consistent um, versus what the dashboards that we had displayed. Um, for uh, for Alameda's account there, um, which substantially under displayed the size of that position. And so uh, that's one of the reasons that I was uh, surprised when we dug into everything at, at how but, big that position had become. 